All right, um, I'm Becca. Welcome to Tiger Talk. We're going to be dropping to you weekly at 9 a.m. on Fridays. And I'm Scott Ryan. Becca's, I'd like to think of me as her Ed McMahon to Johnny Carson, for those of you who are old. For you young people, I don't, I don't know, maybe Conan to uh, Conan's sidekick, which I can't come up with his name. <laughs> but we're going to cover the Tigers. I live in Florida, and I lived uh, up in Maslin my whole life. And for the last year, I moved, and I miss knowing what's going on in Maslin. And that's why we thought we'd do this show for people who aren't maybe in town and want to know what's going on with the Tigers. Yeah, I give a positive spin to the side. Yeah, I love it. And so, Becca, tell us who we have today. So, we're, we have, of course, with us the wonderful, amazing coach, Nate Moore. I won't drop his whole name. <laughs> and then, of course, Stark Media exclusive, JP Simon. Of Simon Says. <laughs> Can't wait to see you. <laughs> so I'm super, super excited to kind of get this rolling and get it going. You know, we've had a scrimmage. We're going to have another scrimmage Friday. Um, school starts next week. That's crazy. You know, it's it's going to get, get, it's going to get, it's going to, you know, once it starts, it feels like every week goes really fast for you guys. I don't know. We've got, we've got some good things going to happen each week. We're going to have a Stark Media you know, Tiger Talk exclusive here later in the show. So I'm really excited about that. And it's going to be fun. Cue the bomb drop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so how did the scrimmage go, Nate and JP? Well, there's, there's some good and some bad, you know, which is typically going to happen out of really any first scrimmage. But, I mean, in, in any game you play, there's going to be some good and some bad. And, and um, you can start with the negative. I'd say, um, you know, we had, we had way too many penalties. We had um, way too many execution errors. Um, we had way too many missed tackles. Um, so there's there's a, a lot of things that we, we had to work on um, coming out of that first scrimmage with Avon, who's a really good team. Who's a really good team. And, you know, you want to scrimmage good good teams because you, you need you need those teams to show you where your weaknesses are. Um, and uh, But, it, but that, that, that was good. That was good. Um, I thought our kids. I thought our kids were uh, were fired up to get out there against somebody in a, in an opposite colored jersey. Um, but I still think there is a little bit of a learning curve out there, and and um, and there's a lot of improvements that, that need to be made. Um, positives. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think the biggest positive uh, coming out of the, the scrimmage was I thought our offensive line played pretty well, um, and we. Um, for for all of our practices before the first scrimmage, we divide our kids up into, into two basically equal teams, and we, and we basically run two practices. Everybody practices on both sides of the ball. We have a white team and a black team, and um, and so so our, our our kids are divided up, and and that that probably affects no position more than the offensive line, mm -hmm. right? So you have guys that um, um, are going to be lining up next to each other that aren't during all those practices. Um, and the, the reason why we do that, there's, there's a couple reasons why. The, the biggest reason is is it helps us develop depth. depth. Um, when we divide the team up into two equal teams, what we end up with is is guys being coached as first-team guys that are, are, that are going to end up being second-team guys. Um, and so for those two weeks, um, really – Two months. You know, we, we practice uh, basically once a week through June and July, minus Fourth of July week. Um, but uh, so we've got we've got guys that are going to end up being backups that are getting coached like first team guys. Um, and so so th that's 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 a, a, the main reason. Another big reason is just uh, you know it, it's a it's a uh, a way to, to efficiently run practice. Um, with everybody playing on both sides of the ball. Right? So that's kind of main, maybe the main other reason. Um, which brings me back to the point that that, that that affects nobody more than the offensive line. So we, we, we feel like there's great benefits that we get from it. But from an offensive line standpoint, you know, we've got guys that are maybe having to fill in at, at this spot and maybe, you know, they're actually going to take more reps at this spot and, and, and they're not working next to the same guys. And, um so the Thursday before that, 
or sorry, the Friday before that, that scrimmage is the first time we, we, we come together and kind of reshuffle the, the teams into basically a varsity and a JV squad. Um, and so that was really that was really their their second time at all uh, being together as a unit. And I felt like I felt like we came off the ball. I felt like we were grinders. I felt like um, if we wanted to line up and 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 run the ball downhill, we could have. Um, you know, we, we wanted to, you know, uh, get some more different things in offensively that, that we wanted to work on. Um, but but I, I thought we were physical up front on the offensive line and executed pretty well. So that was that was a positive. Um, JP, what did you think, JP, of the uh, scrimmage? Um, you know, for coaches, it, it's it's a it's a scrimmage for us as well. It was you know throw the headsets on for the first time, get out there signal everything in it's different than you know a controlled environment like we're used to every day at practice um you know our guys are scripting against our our players and kind of know what what to expect and to go out there we didn't game plan against avon which is a little bit different for us defensively we we usually go into uh you know into competition with a little bit more of an idea of what they're really going to do um i mean we haven't even been hitting all that well we've been full contact a week before that first scrimmage or so yeah, less than a week. So it, re- it really does come at you quick. And I know Coach Moore said, you know, it was just good to go out there and, and get to put our hands on somebody in a different color jersey and, and really see what we got this year. And uh, we rotated a lot of guys defensively on the defensive line. Uh, we played a lot of guys in that scrimmage. Um, had a couple guys we held out that, that we expected, you know, be back sooner than later that will help us. But I agree with Coach Moore. We came off the ball. We were pretty physical. Um, defensive line, especially, and I know you'll probably echo this. We got to watch the ball a little bit. We had a couple offsides that we got to clean, get cleaned up here before we get kicked off. But all in all, I thought it was well. We were, we, it went well. We were physical. Um, a, lot, a lot of tape to improve on and study to get get ready to beat Moeller here. So I have a question because you know a lot of people they loved at home with Coach Moore, and you know they don't they know that he's the head coach. But mm-hmm. exactly what do you coach and like? What are you doing on, on Friday night? So if they're tuning in and they're watching and they see you in your crazy coats and, right. and carrying around the sledgehammer, right, right. like is that guy just crazy or like what do you really what do you really coach? He's just crazy. He's just yeah. crazy. <laughs> so, I coach defensive line with Coach Weber. I coach the interior guys. Um, I'm also signaling the defense. And, and the joke goes, the plays that work are those are the ones I call. The ones that don't look good, Coach McConnell and Coach Lino <laughs> sent down from the box. But, Already calling them out. Right, right, right. <laughs> Got to. Got to keep them on their toes. But. Yeah, I signal the defense and uh, defensive line. Okay, that's that's great. So tell us, um, we were like talking about this. So a lot of people that live out of town, you know, they see the schedule, but they don't understand the schedule. Like I don't always understand the schedule too. You know, I know Moeller, we came from the GCL, so I know that's going to be a competition. But can you kind of run us through the schedule, Nate? And then, um, you know, JP, what do you what do you foresee like? What do you think your favorite game is going to be besides we know week 10? Yeah. So it has to be like, what do you think is going to be like, oh, yeah, that's that's going to be the game. You better tune in and watch it if you're out of town. You, all of them, really. But Yeah. Um, I think it's a great schedule that we have this year. Uh, presents a lot of challenges, and, and that, that starts week one. Um, we play Cincinnati Muller week one, um, which is an exciting game for, for many reasons. They're – um, finished uh, as as uh, state semifinalists last year in Division One. Uh, they return almost everybody from last year. The, the, I think everybody has in the top three or five in, in the state of Ohio. Um, and um, you know, it, it's it's a game that that Madison has played before. This is somebody that people are familiar with. Um, that people uh, have a bad taste in their mouth with. Still, I, I think our record against Moeller is two and ten. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we lost, we lost more in the state championship. We we played a couple series back and forth over over um, the last forty years, something like that. Um, but uh, but but so yeah, it's, it should be the biggest game in the state we've won. It, uh, you know, we, we've gotten d- a dozen requests from for media coverage and and whatnot about this game. I mean, everybody's going to be excited about it. Everybody's going to be watching the score, if not watching the game. So uh, we expect a big crowd. Yeah. Coach Moore, I have a question for you. Since you came to Maslin, you really wanted to start the season off with a game like this. Um, why? Why is that your mo? Well, I, I think 
you know, number one, if, if you if you want to win a state championship, you have to play really good teams, mm -hmm. right? So that's that's yeah, you have to do that. Um, and then um, I I think I, I I like open up week one with a, with a marquee matchup. I, I think it makes your off season better. Um, I, I think it brings juice in, into the season. Um, I just I think it's good. For, I think it's good for the program, and I like it. <laughs> What's week two then? Um, so, so yeah, so, so week one at home versus Cincinnati Moeller, and then week two we we're on the road. Actually, we're on the road for two weeks. Then uh, week two we're at Kent Glen Oak, um, who has been steadily improving over the last uh, two years. I'd say since I think I think Scott Garcia has been back for two years, and um, um, you saw market improvement last year physicality wise. You know, the, the, Scott does a great job, and, and I know those guys are working in the weight room. I, I expect that to be a very very physical game to be back to where it, it was kind of when when, uh, when we got here back in 2015 um, so it's gonna be a great game over there against against Glen Oak and we've got we've got so much respect for those guys because there's not a lot of there's not a lot of local games that we get to play and and, and Glen Oak always wants to schedule that game um, so you know you got to tip the hat to those guys mm -hmm. um, Week three, we're on the road again, like I said, um, bringing back another rivalry game uh, in Mansfield Senior. I think it's the third most often played in, in Maslin history. I haven't double-checked in a while, but I, I'm pretty sure that's true with McKinley the more. And, and I think Mansfield is third. Did you play Mansfield, JP, when you played? We did play Mansfield when I played. Yep, we sure did. We played down there in the Mud Bowl, I want to say. Yep. <laughs> I think it's turf now, isn't it? They just got it turfed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arlen Field's turf. Yep. Um, yeah, that's a game that Maslin has played for a long time, and, and that that yeah. rival that game continued into you know the 2000s, mm -hmm. you know when Coach Simon was playing. Sure. Um, and and it's been gone for a while, and, and we're really excited to bring it back. I, Coach uh, Coach Chioki is a great coach and does does a great job down there too. And, and we've talked several times about about finding you know half the battle is having a common opening, and um, and then you know both both programs feeling good about the game then you know also but um you know everything just kind of lined up and you know we had an opening and that, that they also had and uh, you know we both felt, felt good about bringing that game back so it's a two-game series um we're going to be at, at mansfield senior uh this season and, and then they're going to come back to us uh in 2023 so i'm um, excited about week three week four we'll be at home against warren harding um you know that's uh that's a rivalry game. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I think Warren's on the upswing as well. Um, they've got a, they've got a big bruise in Division One tailback. Uh, traditionally, they have at least that. Um, and in the last couple of years, they, they they've been a little bit down, I would say, and, and they didn't really have that marquee Division One player. Um, but they do they do this year. They've got a big, strong, tough running back. Uh, he's a Division One kid. Um, they got a great quarterback who's back who, who to be honest, shredded us last year. Um, a Lynn Bowden? No, he's not a Lynn Bowden. You know, we're just, <laughs> too many of those we, 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 yeah. don't, we don't say that name out loud. Right, right, right. You know, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, I think, what's his name? Dallas Jett, I think is his Jett, name. Jett, yeah. Um, but great player, and, uh, and you know, Warren's going to be really good. Um, you know, you don't hear a lot of chatter out of Warren, but I've heard a little chatter out of Warren that like they're you know they're gunning for us. They think it's the, they're 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 here to take a big step forward and whatnot. So, um, but hey, that's just that's the next step on the on the schedule for us. Like you know you, you know Coach Sign, we yeah. give everybody's best shot. We saw them at that uh, trench life challenge over there at the hall, and they uh, they competed. Their their big guys competed with our big guys, and it was a. Uh, it was a heck of a matchup. They got, I think they, that's who beat Marcus in a couple of the events, and Warren's going to be ready to play. Mm -hmm. I it, loved that game from last year. I thought it was one of the best games. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a crazy finish, but it was fun to watch. Not as a defensive coach it was, and yeah. I, I could have gone without seeing that one. <laughs> <laughs> they were the, they were, wore the throwback jerseys, too, yep. right? Yeah. I was, like, so confused yep. when I got there because, you know, I just haven't, you know, this is only our, this is our eighth season, right? And I was like, Correct. I was like, they're red. Mm. Like, did they change? I was so confused about that. Yeah. That so the last several years when we played at Warren, they've used that game as as their game to honor their their history. In that they, there there used to be two high schools. There used to be Warren West Reserve, and they were 
the Raiders. And then there was Warren Harding, and they were the Panthers. And, mm -hmm. and Warren Harding, I believe this is correct, they, they were red and black. And Warren Western Reserve, I think, wore the gold. I, th I think gold and black, but they, they had the gold color. And when they combined back into one high school, you know, everybody wants this and that, and it should be named this. And, and, and so they went with Warren Harding. They went with Western Reserve's colors and mascot. Mm. Right? So, so now that they're the Warren Harding Raiders and they're gold and black, but um, for our game, you know, and it's obvious, you know, why they'd want to do that, you know, with, with our game because, you know, it's a traditional rival and all that and all the history between our two programs. Uh, but they wear the throwback jerseys, so that's why they wear the red and black jerseys. Now, I think this is right. I don't know that this is right. I think this is right. So, so a long time ago, probably before anybody that's listening played football, um, like in basketball, the home team wore white and the away team wore um, the colored jersey. Right. And so I, I think that's probably why they went with the white jersey. Because, I, I, you know, when they were going to make that purchase, I doubt they couldn't have got the colored jersey. I think that's probably because they went back that far in their history and, and, and want to wear the white jersey at home for that game. And so that's why we wear the dark jersey at one. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. It was so confusing. Could be. Who's, who's after Warren? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so after Warren, it, you know, it, it, the, 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 the toughest of the schedule continues. We, we play uh, the defending Division One state champion, uh, St. Edward Eagles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and uh, that was, you know, that game last year for us was, was really, it was a turning point in the season because, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, it, w lining up, you would you would definitely say that uh, that that St. Edwards de was definitely putting uh, the bigger, stronger, faster players on the on the field. But you know, with Tigers, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll take the field and play with anybody. But um, well, the game wasn't going so well at the start. You know, actually, it was going really bad. We had almost nothing going offensively. Um, we actually played pretty well defensively, mm -hmm. to be honest. We played pretty well defensively, but we had nothing going on the offensive side of the ball, and they were their front seven was really, really, really good. Um, and our quarterback gets hurt, and um, we've got to we've got to bring on uh, our backup quarterback who happens to be a freshman. Um, which is, you know, that's not the ideal situation for doing right. that, right? Um, you know, bringing in a freshman backup quarterback against the best team on, on your schedule, who's, you know, probably one of the best front sevens that, that any of us have seen, and. Um, and, and we're probably giving up one score away from being out of the game, really. Uh, and uh, and so Jalen Slaughter comes in and uh, throws two touchdown passes, mm -hmm. leads, leads a, another drive where we kick a field goal, and all of a sudden it, it's like the middle of the fourth quarter, and we're in the ball game. I think I think we scored, and we were I think we're down by nine. I want to say, um, and then we ended up giving a score to I think you know we ended up losing by two scores, but. Um, you know that kid. That kid brought us back in the game. You know, put us in the game basically. That 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 we were we were very close to being out of. Mm -hmm. um, well, and you skipped a part. If you remember, the first snap went past him, and he caught it to the side and kept his head about him, like to be a freshman. Because I remember thinking, like, wow, that's his first snap, huh. and yeah. he, he kept his poise. So that that made for a bright future for the Tigers. Yeah, no doubt. Jalen's, Jalen's, uh, and he, he's had a good camp. Um, he had a good, good first scrimmage. You know, I know he's, he's looking forward to Friday like everybody else, but he, he's definitely taking steps forward and progressing. And that was, yeah, I think there were a couple plays like that, that, that the plays were, were, um, were, were all but cooked mm -hmm. and he kind of uncooked them. And he's, he was 14. Like he's baby, yeah. young, young freshman. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. a young freshman. Because yeah. I had him in track, so he's he's one of the babies of the freshmen mm -hmm. too. So mm -hmm. I can't imagine going against right. someone like you at grown eighteen. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's yeah, it's different man. for sure. Yeah. So yeah, so you know, so week five, it's 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 Saint Ed's again, and they're going to be really good again, and um, um, you know that that's that's definitely you know. Nobody's looking past anybody, but that is definitely a game that, that, that you circle because, like I said, like, like you, you want to win a state championship, you got to play good.
good teams. And, and, and if you want to win it, you got to beat good teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really what it comes down to. So, um, you know, we, we, that, that's definitely a game that, that, that's circled for us, um, the Eds game. Um, and then and six, uh, we play Austin Town Fitch. Um, that was that was a game last year that uh, man we, we were we were backs against the wall in that game at Fitch and mm-hmm. and we're really close to, to giving it away to losing that game and and uh, that was Jalen's first game as the starter going into the game and, um, and he threw a couple touchdown passes passes we had a couple really really key plays that saved some touchdowns and um, you know that was a uh, that was definitely a game that you look back on last year and say, man, we, we just we gutted that one out. We were missing a couple guys, and um, and so yeah, so Fitch comes back to us this this year, and uh, they've got a Division One kid. I think he's committed to Iowa State. I think he's a receiver mm-hmm. safety. Mm-hmm. Um, so so you know that that's 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 really a rivalry game also. Do you want to know what my favorite play of that was? I like, do. Yeah, because because I'm filming, but I do have to say this because I love Big Mike. Mm-hmm. And so he was like, you know, he gets so amped up. And oh, he's, yeah. like, he's like, put me in. Put me in. Mm-hmm. I want to hit somebody. And, and he, he was, it was a kickoff, I think. And he like ran down the whole field and trucked again. Full speed. Full <laughs> speed. Yeah. I mean, he's like really fast yep. for as big as he is. Mm-hmm. And I just remember the kid was like, Laying there and then got up like he, you know, because I was down there filming. I was like, "Yeah, that's Big Mike." Like, All gas and he, Big Mike. And he's like, "You see that?" When he walked out, you see that? You see that? You know, he's like right. pointing. So um, it was pretty cool. All gas with Big Mike. Yeah. Um, you don't usually see kids that big running out on kickoff. Yeah. So yeah, so Fitch game uh, uh, week six, uh, week seven um, is a team that we've never played before. They're a team called Middletown out of Delaware. Um, but but I think that's an exciting matchup. They're the best team out of Delaware. They, they won their big school state title last year. They've got six, seven Division One kids. Um, I, I think it's going to be a, a team similar to that East St. Louis team that we played in 2018 that was really, really good, and we, we kind of pulled one out um, at the end. So that, that's an exciting game. Um, week eight is, is Buffalo Canisius, who we've now played twice. Uh, we played them last year. And... Um, um, well coached, disciplined, private school, you know, out of Buffalo. So, you know, we're looking forward to that game. And then, and then week nine, week nine is 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 a, is a different type of scenario. You want me to explain that to you? Yeah, because I don't understand week nine. People ask me, and I'm like, I don't know. I'm still figuring out week nine. So I'm like, I don't understand. Me. Yeah, can you explain it to the coach <laughs> and myself? Yeah, so here's what's going on week nine is is. Um, so there was, you know, when you get that deep in your schedule, there's there's only a certain amount of teams that are even available to schedule, right? And um, we just we, we had a couple teams that we were talking to. And we just we just couldn't we just couldn't get anything done. We just couldn't get a deal done. Um, and uh, and so the, then you start to think about that the fact that uh, you know the goal is to win a state championship. We, we got to play 16 weeks to do that. Um, you know, the NFL doesn't play 16 weeks without a bye. You know, yeah, they're professionals. Um, you know, college football, you play what fourteen, maybe fifteen games total. Mm-hmm. You know, and every one of those teams has a bye. You know, college football players, and 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 they're asking us to play sixteen straight weeks with no bye. Um, you know, so there, there's some there's a, maybe a logical fallacy there. And then then you take a look at the 2020 season. You know, when we played that six-game season and everybody made the playoffs and, and the top four seeds had seeds had a bye, and we had a bye, and and the bye that week seven was phenomenal. It was it was great. Mm-hmm. Um, we got to get back to the basics a little bit. Um, um, you know, we got to double down on our, on our lifts and, and recovery, and um, it, it was really, really good for us. Um, so uh, for those reasons um, – Keeping week nine open started becoming a a, a uh, not just a re- realistic uh, uh, a possibility, but like an, almost an exciting possibility. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know I it started to think, well, okay, if if we keep week nine open, you know, is there something else that we can do special for maybe our JV guys Friday night? So. Started talking to, to several teams and settled in with a team called Canada Prep out of Canada. 
Um, and they were willing to come down and, and play what's going to amount to our, our JV squad. Um, and uh, and so, so we're going to play them on Friday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, the band's going to be there. The cheerleaders are going to be there. It's going to feel exactly like a Friday night game. We hope that the stands are, um, you know, we understand maybe that they're not filled, but, uh, you know, we hope the fans come out to support our, 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 our JV guys. Um, but so this game will be comprised of not not just a typical JV team, but also all of our first backups, you know, so we'll, we'll hold out our starters. Um, but our backups will play. And there's actually no rule about seniors not being able to play in a JV game. Seniors are allowed to play in a G JV game. So one of the things that I think is the coolest uh, aspect of what we're doing is we're going to get to play all of our non-starting seniors. So every year you're going to have some kids um, that they're four-year guys, you know, um, they, they, they love Maslin football. You know, they probably had family play football for Maslin. And uh, uh, they come to practice every day. They punch the clock. You know, they practice their butts off, and um, and, and, and maybe they're, they're just not good enough to play for us, you know, on your regular Friday night. Uh, but they're, they're hugely important to the program. I mean, we can't run practice. Mm -hmm. We can't run a great practice, especially without them. Um, and so those guys, all those non-starting seniors are going to get to play a ton of football on that Friday night. Um, they're going to get to run out. They're going to get to run out of the tunnel knowing that, that they're taking the field and they're helping the Tigers to victory tonight. So... Um, I think that's as cool as, it, as any part of it. Will uh, you still dress everybody, or you'll just dress? You won't dress your starters. Um, that, that's, that's to be determined. Yeah, that's to, be, to determined. be determined. JP, like as mm -hmm. a coach, like does you know because you know you see college games and, and stuff like that. Does does that excite you to have something like that? Because now you get to develop those younger guys who maybe are sitting two or sure. three years waiting for their chance. It to just start. Get, it just gives them a chance to go showcase and you know get rewarded for all the work they put in, and it, it just gives them a chance to you know get out there and show. Like Coach said, maybe they're not ready yet for Friday night. Mm -hmm. Just to get the whole Friday night experience, you feel good for them kids to get a little payoff for all the work they put in. They're gonna, you have some excited parents. Yeah, for sure, for sure, <laughs> yeah, definitely, and, and as well they should be, mm -hmm. as well they should be. You know, those, those those kids should get to experience that, and I'm, and I'm glad we get to provide it for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then week ten, what meeting is this? What meeting is this? Well, one, we we talking about this what the official was because they've had a couple double years. Yeah, I want right? to say one thirty two. So, is it? What was the hunters game? Ninety four, ninety five. Yeah, yeah, I want to say one thirty two. No, this is our 127th season. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, 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 I mean, that game speaks for itself. I mean, that, that's that's on our mind all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it never goes away. Um, you know, we consider it a great responsibility to to maintain the the tradition that we have in Maslin, and uh, and and the biggest part of that is taking the field on Saturday at two o'clock, ready to go and winning that game. You know, that's the biggest part of what we do. So, um, you know, that, that nothing nothing gets our coaching staff more fired up and ready to go than, than thinking about week 10, Saturday, 2 o'clock. Right. So, JP, I, I have – I've heard some rumors, so maybe you can – Oh, boy. You can tell us about this. So, you know, we're talking about all the um, – the weeks, you know, what are you, what, what Simon says gonna what what are you gonna do? What are you gonna roll out each week? We're gonna we're gonna come out with a uh, a new shirt of the week every week. We'll have uh, we got a, a stadium store there under the stands that we set up, and each week we're gonna have a new shirt available that that you can only pick up at that stadium store at the game, and then we'll also have it available in our store that down here at 59 Lincoln Way East. We just opened up today for a little soft grand opening. You'll be able to get it there on Saturday and the rest of the week as well. But how did your How did your opening go? Went really well. It went really <laughs> it was crazy. It's been a crazy day. We started with camp this morning and been running all day. The store was busy. Had a lot of good deals rolling and yeah. been run sales all week. So it'll yeah. be a good week. This is a nice location. So mm -hmm. he just you just said the address, but like I wouldn't know what you meant by that. So it's like right across from the museum. Right, right across the museum. Right across from Benders. Right here on this corner. Uh, you can see Shears. Can see Lincoln Theater. A uh, really good spot for both Stark Media and the Tiger Store going forward. Yeah, There's fine. a new start time this year oh, yeah. on the games. Uh, we For years, it was 8 o'clock in my day, and then it went to 7.30. Now we're going to 7. Oh, my goodness. Why the new start time? I would not want to start at 8 o'clock. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> That's awful. 
I, I, I would I would love the eight o'clock start time. Uh, to be honest, we'd be still I playing at midnight. Loved it. it was fun. Who wants to play at midnight? You know, like it like it it it, it definitely makes sense. You know, you, you maybe get more people in from out of town and and and, and you can go get something to eat and then head to the game or, or whatnot or you know some people have to work later. You know, I, I get all that. Um, so the, the the reasons why are, are this are number one. Um, when, when we go to the playoffs, we play at 7 o'clock. So all of our playoff games are at 7 o'clock. Also, um, every away game we play during the season is at 7 o'clock. Um, and so when you're, when you're looking at, at eliminating variables, you know, when, when you're talking about, you know, football games where, you know, the outcome may be decided by inches and, and you're, you're trying to find ways to – you know, eliminate variables that 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 you and, or, and the kids are having to deal with. You know, it, it, that's a variable, and it's a variable that that we do have control over. Um, and then, and then when you look at okay, so you know, both both things being equal, let's say, you know, what, what are some things that may tip the scale? Is is that when we, we play at seven o'clock? You know, we, we kind of see this in the playoffs, and when we have not not so much away games per se, because you know, there's more travel there maybe. Um, but um, especially the home playoff games that have been at 7 o'clock, you know, our kids get home earlier, which means they get to bed earlier, which means they have more sleep, they have better recovery. Um, and so it really comes down to um, what's best for the kids, right? And so between all those factors of, um, you know, once we get to the playoffs, the games are 7 o'clock. And, and so if we play at 7, then, then there's no changes that, that need to be made there. It, it, um, you know, same thing with the away games. And then, like I said, you know, so you start to say, okay, so, you know, why, what are the reasons why we would do either one? And, and, and when, you, when you look at um, what's best for the kids, you know, getting the kids home, getting better sleep, getting better recovery, which, which you know, I'm sure – We've got a lot of fans out there that would love to play at eight o'clock, but I, I think they more than that love Tiger victories and, and uh, the, nine, the 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 seven o'clock start. Um, like I said, we, we were talking about variables that you can control in games that, that are that are won and lost by inches. Um, that that that's that's the major factor there. What time did you play? Were you seven thirty? We were always seven thirty. I want, we were talking to TJ. I want to say we were even like eight o'clock. Wasn't there it used to be some eight o'clock? Games? That's what he said. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were later than that. at least seven thirty. I think there was some eight o'clock starts. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that had to deal with the schedule at the steel mill mm -hmm. when they when they rotated because they worked twelve hours. It shift. did. That, it, it actually did. That's why they were at eight, so people working at the steel mill could get to the game. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. But that's cool. That's yeah. what I. You know, I love those little things that you mm -hmm. learn in Masson. You know, people come up and tell us stories all the time. It's, it's one of the things that you love those little tidbits that you can't. Always, you don't always read in books, or you know, there's plenty right. of books about Maslin, but right. you don't, you don't always read. Wait about a minute, them. did you just say there's no books about Maslin? I said there's plenty of Wait books. Minute. Wait, I said there's plenty of books about Maslin. He pulls all those we, books up. Oh, because you know we got a Maslin Tigers 15 for 15. I know. I think J, JP's JP's on that cover, yeah. isn't he? Carrying Get around the plug his, in there. You, yeah. You, you can purchase those books. Yeah, he got the, for sale the, the, down here at the Tigers. 59 Lincoln Way East. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Right. <laughs> yeah. The so one of the things I think is amazing. So we we talk about you know Tiger Talk. It's about the community, and that's why Scott you know wanted to talk about this. Mm -hmm. So talk about like. I mean, you've got all those football players. You're saying mm -hmm. it's been a busy day for you. How do you mm -hmm. how do you feed? Them? I mean, they're Big Mike's hungry. Yeah. You're working yeah, it. So, yeah, yeah. so so what do you do? What do you do? Yeah. Well, so so we have we have a great program within our school district. Most of the summer, we're able to feed the kids uh, lunch every day that we're in, whether it, we're in the weight room or whether we have practice. We're able to feed the kids in our cafeteria with, with food provided by, by our school district, which is, which I think through is federal funded, mm -hmm. um, with our, with our, uh, cafeteria workers, uh, in the building feeding our kids. And so that, that's the number one way. And that, that's, that's, um, that's phenomenal, uh, uh that we're able to provide that for our kids. Uh, but there are certain times where, where that's not available. Like for instance, this week when, um, um, I think all, all of our cafeteria staff are, 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 they're, you know, breaking things down, cleaning things, getting everything prepped for the school year, and so they're not available this week, and so we have to call on our community to help help feed the tigers. And um, there's been there's been several businesses step up 
uh, just this week. Um, on Monday, we had we had menches fed, fed the Tigers. We had a great pasta, meatball, mm -hmm. salad meal. Um, today, we had top of the viaduct. Uh, I think it was. I think it was pulled chicken. Pulled chicken. Yeah. Pulled chicken. Pulled chicken. Really good. And 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 the, the tiger moms helped serve the meals and, pr and provide some, you know, some auxiliary dishes. Um, tomorrow w w looks like we have uh, uh, sideliners feeding the guys. Uh, the, I'm sorry. The, yeah, it looks like those sideliners feeding the guys. Um, Is that when we go to the, like they do the steaks? No, 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 no. That's next Thursday. Oh, okay. Um, I'm talking about tomorrow. Yeah. And then looks like looks like this Thursday, Better Winds, a retirement community, is feeding the guys. Uh, Bella Sierra, over there by Progressive. Really good. Food. On Friday. Yeah. Uh, right? Is yep. that right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, a great Italian place. Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, and then downtown. Bella Sierra is downtown. Bella Sierra. Yeah. Yeah. I think down yeah, here. I not square. screw that up. Yeah, yeah. Is, that, is that is that in the town plaza? Yes, 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 yes. I've been there too. Both right. both places good. Right now I'm not. Now I'm confused. It's one of the two. Do you like? Did they feed you like when you were coming up to the program? Did they yep. do this too? So this is like a tradition. I mean, like. And it's been a lot of the same people mm -hmm. over the years. I know Smiley's has fed the team for yeah. years. Uh, yeah, a lot of John George's is always helping us out yeah. with subs. And, yeah. and, and, you know, we had old timers. We had wings over the summer. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's always a smaller yeah. local size. Yeah, Bell Sayers yeah. over here. Town Plaza. Town Plaza. I get that one right. Better right? get that one right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, actually, Eli and, I, Eli and I had lunch there the other day. Really good really pepperoni good. rolls. Yeah. Excellent pepperoni yeah. rolls. Yeah. And it's it's much bigger in there than you would think, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. from the outside. It's mm -hmm. really nice. Um, yeah, so we have Bella Sierra Friday. And then next Monday will be our last uh, meal like this before before we ramp up into into the school schedule, and that's margaritas. Downtown oh, yeah. feeding the guys. Maybe maybe Taco Monday. Taco Monday. Yeah. But that's amazing. Menchez Monday this week. Taco Monday next week. Yeah. <laughs> Can't go wrong with tacos. It's hard Can't to beat. Wrong, but we, we we really appreciate those those uh, uh, community members and in and, and mm -hmm. local. Businesses and restaurants that, that step up to be the Tigers. We we can't do what we do without without their support. Yeah. So, so the, one of the last things I want to talk about before we you know shut it down is so you got captains. So I know you're probably excited. Oh yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. So tell me, how do you choose the captains? Like, are the coaches do it? Like, how does it work? And then who are our captains? So our captains. Um, so. So, so the kids, the kids vote on the captains. Um, now, we, we when we vote is is the last day of our retreat. So we have we have a team retreat um, at the end of July. We, we kind of have we, we have a, we have a, a week of mini camp that leads into a dead week, the last week of July, and then we come back in in, in August for you know what you might call two days. We, we don't run two days anymore, but you know that that section of your preseason. Um, and so the end of that that July mini camp, we we have we have, we have two nights of retreat, um, which which should be the most pivotal point of our season. Um, and then and then that Friday after practice, we vote for captains. And 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 by that time, the, the idea is the guys should know exactly what we want out of our captains coming out of the retreat. Um, and so so the kids vote. Um, we we have a we have a meeting and, and we take nominations. You have to be nominated, and, and the kids if they want to nominate somebody for captain, they got to come up from the team. They got to say why they're nominating this person and whatnot. You know, we, we try to make them. Uh, you know, we want it to mean something, right? Um, and then, then then once we're done taking nominations, we vote. Um, and um, the, the only the only role that well the coaches do vote, and so they have they have a vote they have a, a vote of one. Just like just like the kids, so you know we got 82 kids and, and what 11, 10, 10, 11, 12 coaches, something like that. Um, so the coaches do have a vote, um, and then and then I take the votes and 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 I I like to see what the numbers say. So um, if if we had if we had two guys that you know this guy got 80 percent of the team's vote and this guy got you know 75 percent of the team's vote and and maybe the the next level of guys is 50. One percent and fifty percent. Well, then maybe that year we have two captains, right? That's what that's what the kids are telling me by by their vote. Or, you know, maybe we've got a, a seventy-eight percent, a, a seventy-five percent 
a 68% and a 67%, and then we have a drop off to 39%. Well, the you know the kids are telling me we've got four captains this year, so I just kind of I look at look at the, the vote, look at the numbers, um, and, and and try to try to uh, uh, let the numbers speak essentially on on how many captains we're going to have, and it really doesn't matter to me how many captains we have as as long as we have real captains, and no one can be a captain just just for the name. Of it. Right. So right. who are your captains? So our captains are Marcus Moore, senior. Wiltro Hartson, senior, uh, Angelo Salvino, senior, and uh, Zach Liebler, junior. Oh, one junior. You got some defensive guys in there. Yeah, I was having my man Marcus <laughs> leading from the front. <laughs> yeah. I was excited for him. He deserves it. <laughs> that doesn't it. happen very yeah. often, does yeah, it? Yeah, no. He deserves it, though. He worked his butt off for that. Yeah. So you have a – you know, a media exclusive for us. Oh boy. You know, we gotta we gotta finish with this. So, you know. up, so what's know. our what's our Stark Media Tiger Talk? What's our exclusive? What do you got for me? Stark Media exclusive. You hear here first. Um, so so we, we are we have a we have an honorary captain, uh Zarin Barry. Mm -hmm. Uh wonderful little guy, um who, who's actually the younger brother of one of our of one of our players. Um, and, uh, uh, but we're actually going to have two additional, uh, honorary captains with us. We won. Um, Boy. and so, so the, the two honorary captains are going to be, uh, former mass and tiger coach, Mike Kearns. Wow. And, ah. Wow. And, uh, and former Cincinnati Moeller head coach, Jerry Faust. That's, so That's big time. That's big time. Wow. Yeah. So those guys, That's incredible. Be there. yeah, those guys yeah. will be there with us they'll be at the at the coin toss and and you know we'll, we'll honor them they both a little bit you know because you know even though they're our enemy that night you know i think in mass we we, we respect the history of sure. and we respect the, the great teams that we play and and uh and so i, I thought it would be really cool to have coach faust there as well with coach Kearns. absolutely that's the can't wait to tell you start media drop of the week right there <laughs> heard it here first, heard it here first. where you heard it tiger talk you Love heard it, it. Love can you believe how much this guy talked today Man. it's like amazing I know. well see you just needed to have the word talk in the title of that's the show it. yeah that's that's it. It. the other one he was just sitting at home yeah that's what he did he was at home yeah now he's talking tigers well, now, well I, 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 the, the thing is scott she was nicer to me today you know Back in the day, that, okay. that at home with Coach Moore stuff, she's always patching me about getting on there at home with Coach Moore this, at home with Coach Moore that. She was nice to me today. <laughs> See, and I thought it was me. I wanted to take the credit for it, but fine. It goes to Becca. Well, thanks, guys, so much for being our first guest. Um, if you're watching us at home, you can send us an email at tigertalk14 at gmail.com if you have any questions. You might say, why 14? That's for Section 14. That's where I said. That's, that's where it's at in Paul Brown Tiger Stadium, Section 14. How long have you so had Tiger those Talk, tickets? You've had those tickets for My home. whole life, uh, before I was born, my dad had them. Um, way back into the 60s, when he passed, it came to me. And now my son's I and me. I mean, he's <laughs> expecting them. <laughs> Waiting for me to go so he can get them. Uh, so, yeah. Well, take your time. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I mean, he's just looking at me. He wants those tickets. Yeah. But uh, so follow us um, on Facebook. You can check us out at the 15 for 15. Uh, follow Stark Media. You can follow Becca and Nate on Twitter. And then be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tiger Talk, on YouTube, because we're going to put these out every Friday on game day at 9 a.m. And, hey, we did it. We did a show. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. So until next time. Go Tigers. No, T-I-G. E-R-S. <laughs> Spirit of Stark embodies the pride that each community in our county has for their local schools and teams. That's why when it's time to find the best in custom apparel, look no further than Spirit of Stark, located at 409 Erie Street North. Custom embroidery offered on almost any type of garments, from shirts and jackets to hats, pants, and shorts. Their state-of-the-art equipment allows Spirit of Stark to fulfill any order, big or small. You name it, they can do it. Want to look your best heading back to school this fall? Contact Spirit of Stark at 330-806-6745. We can't wait to hear from you. Thank you.